I'm going to do something a little, no, a lot different today. I got to thinking, which I do sometimes. I was thinking about this little apartment that I moved into when I first moved out of my parents' home. Little efficiency apartment. There was no oven and there was a small two burner stove. And that was what I had for cooking. And I thought, how do you make pizza if you live in a place like that where you don't have a conventional oven? Maybe you've got a microwave oven, but not a conventional oven. How do you make pizza? I'm going to show you. First thing I want to make is my dough. And I've got some flour here. And when I do things like this, I prefer to weigh some of the ingredients rather than to measure them by volume. This is eight and one quarter ounces by weight, 234 grams of bread flour, to which I'm going to add one half tablespoon of sugar, and then one teaspoon of active dry yeast. And then I'm gonna use a whisk to kind of blend that up. Get that mixed around. Five and one half ounces. I did this by weight. I even weigh the water. Five and a half ounces, 149 grams of water. This is at room temperature. And I checked this volumetrically. It's five and a quarter fluid ounces or 155 milliliters, if I have that correct. To this, I'm going to add about a half of a tablespoon of olive oil. I'm just going to kind of drizzle some in, in there. And then I'm going to mix this together a little bit. And finally, I'm going to add one half teaspoon of salt. And then stir this until it comes together to form a dough. Very likely, I will add more flour. I usually do. Okay, so that's coming together into a dough. Going to move that onto the counter. Scrape out the bowl a little bit. Okay, here's my flour duster. Just to kind of help get some of this dough off the spoon. It's going to stick. It's always sticky when I start out. Sometimes I add a lot. Sometimes I add a little bit of extra flour. Um, I don't know what the story is with dough. Sometimes flour absorbs more liquid. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's a change in physics for the water. Yeah, I know that's not true. <laughs> I have a strange imagination sometimes. Okay. Now... I'm going to knead this until it's smooth, and as I work it, if I have it sticking too much to my hand, I'll work in more flour with my flour duster there. I can always tell, already tell by the feel that it's going to be a little too sticky. I don't mind a little stickiness. I think for this dough, a bit of stickiness is okay, but not too much like that. And the idea with kneading the dough like this is you're doing two things. One is you're getting it smooth while the flour in there is absorbing moisture from the water. But if I understand the geekiness of it, there are two proteins in flour. And by the way, I'm using bread flour, but you can use all-purpose flour. It's not going to matter. It's not going to make a big difference, but I'm using bread flour. Bread flour has a little more protein in it. And supposedly these two proteins hook up and form the gluten chains that give dough its elasticity. So you want to knead it enough not only to get it smooth, but to get it elastic. And that could take a few minutes. 
Okay, I've been kneading this for a while now. That feels really smooth. That feels good. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to show you a trick. Here's my trick. If you've got one of these, an instant pot, you have a proofing box. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I learned this from the internet. You don't need one of these. You can just put the dough, like I'm going to do, in a bowl. Put some olive oil in there. And then place the dough in there, move it around so that it's oiled all over. I'm going to wipe my hands with some paper towels. All right, and then I'm going to cover this with some plastic wrap. I don't know that it's all that necessary because it's going to be inside of this. Set this at venting because I don't want to do any pressure. Put this inside. Put the lid back on. And then press the yogurt setting. And it should be, and it is, it's set for one hour. So that's going to uh, tell us that it's now operating. That's going to proof that dough. And the reason why I do this, and again, it's not necessary. You can put it in a bowl and set it in a warm place. Some people put it on top of their refrigerator. I used to put the bowl on top of my computer because it was warm. My desktop computer, not my laptop. But I use this because I get consistent results every single time. It's the right temperature for the right duration of time. So I'm going to let this rise and we'll see what it looks like in an hour. It's been one hour. Let's see what I've got here. Oh, look at that. Set this aside. And look how that has risen up near the top of the bowl. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on that. And I'm going to put this on my counter. Falls right out because of the oil. I'm going to shape this and do a pizza crust by mostly just stretching it. Like so. And it'll pull back a little bit. So you just keep working with it. And if anything, make it a little bit larger than you need. And I'm actually okay with that right there. Now, like my hands. And I've got a skillet. So I'm going to put some oil in the bottom of the skillet. And then put the pizza dough inside the skillet. Can you see what I'm going to do? What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on the stove and I'll put a lid on it and I'm going to cook this dough over medium low low heat for about 10 minutes. So here's my skillet. Wait till you see what this looks like. Look how nicely browned that is. And we're going to do the other side. So meantime, what I'm going to do is I have some marinara sauce here. This is just plain um, jarred marinara sauce. If you like something extra fancy, you can make your own. And then you put your favorite toppings on. I like plenty of cheese. Sprinkle the cheese and don't worry about cheese that gets down around the edge because that's going to brown a little bit and 
give you some nice flavor on the edge. And then I'm running low on oregano. I have to get some more oregano. Sprinkle some oregano on there. And then dot it with some Italian sausage. I cook these and then slice them. Something I do. This is pepperoni. And this is large pepperoni. This is what they call sandwich pepperoni. But I put it on a paper plate and I microwave it for about 30 seconds. And you can see all the fat that comes out. Put some of this on there. And I happen to have some caramelized onion. I love caramelized onion on pizza. One thing I like to do is put a little bit of olive oil on the top. The Italian pizzeria places in Connecticut would always do that. Put the lid back on, then return this back to the heat for another 8 to 10 minutes, a little bit longer if you want it more brown. There is my pizza. What does it look like underneath? Browned. I don't know how well you can see that. I'm going to turn a piece over. But I'm going to let that cool for a few minutes just to let that cheese set up because that right now is a little bit too hot to eat. So there it is. Now the one thing that I don't like about doing pizza this way is that I have no browning on the top. And I do like a little bit of browning on the top, which I get when I use my oven. But an advantage is the, the dough crust is actually browned on both sides. Let's cut a piece out here. Some people say I should get a, one of those pizza wheel pizza cutters. Nah. Give me a good French knife. That's all I need. Flip that over. Look how brown that is on the bottom. Beautiful. Beautiful. I'm going to put a couple of pieces on a plate for myself. Let's see, I'll cut it over here, I guess. Cheese is still a little bit stringy. There it is. A couple of pieces of pizza for my lunch. I love pizza. Who doesn't love pizza? It's a little late for lunch, but I'm okay. Perfect. Oh, that is so good. I love pizza. And I'll tell you, one advantage of doing it this way is you don't have to heat up your oven like on a hot summer day. It's enough to just use the top of the stove. So, excuse me, but I'm going to go enjoy my skillet pizza.